stop coding buttons wrong. If the current code for buttons in your Roblox game looks like this, or if you don't know how to code a button, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to properly code buttons so you only have to add some tags for them to work. By the end of this video, you'll be able to make nice tweens for all your buttons and be able to make a toggle button that easily toggles on and off. Editor Grayson here, uh, reviewing the scripts I made and the video, I realized a large part of this tutorial is very similar to another YouTuber, Riley Bites. He makes great videos. I highly recommend going checking his channel out. Yeah, if you like Roblox Studio content, go check them out. All right, I'm in a new Roblox place and this is where we're gonna be coding the button. So we wanna come into starter GUI and add a folder and I'm gonna name this folder scripts. This is where I'm gonna put the scripts for this video. But all we'll need is a local script and inside the local script, we'll need a module script. We'll name the local script buttons and we'll name the module script button actions. And for this video, I'll be placing all my buttons in this frame uh, for you place the button where you need the button. All right, before we get started, we're gonna need to import Fusion into our Roblox Studio. So what we wanna do is we wanna come to this link, it'll be down in the description, and we wanna scroll to the bottom. We wanna click on fusion.rbxn. And when we click on that, it should download. We can open the downloads and drag it directly into our Roblox Studio, and then we can drag that into scripts. And now that we have Fusion imported into our Roblox Studio, we can get started on the code. All right, wasting no time, we're gonna come into the buttons local script, and we're gonna define the module script. So we're gonna say local, button actions equals require script dot button actions next we're going to def define the gui so we're going to say local gui equals script dot parent dot parent uh, for me this is the starter gui um, or you can get the local player and then player dot gui really up to you next we're going to define the types of buttons we want so we're going to say local button actions equals open squiggly bracket this is a table in the table we're going to say press button equals button actions dot press button next we'll do toggle equals button actions dot toggle button next we'll do shimmer equals equals button actions dot shimmer. And last we'll do spew equals button actions dot spew. Now we have that table done and we want to initialize all the buttons. So four underscore comma descendant in pairs GY get descendants. And then we want to do. So what this is going to do is going to search through all the descendants of the GY when the player first loads and initializes a script. And we want to say if descendant is a GY button because that's all we care for right now. Then for tag comma action in pairs button actions do. So now we're looping through this table and then we want to say if descendant has tag tag this is the tag so if the descendant has this tag then we want to do action descendant so we're going to do this action on descendant and that's this script done super easy next we're going to move to button actions all right now that we're in button actions we're going to change this from module to button actions so at the top of the script we're going to define tween service equal game get service tween service and then we're also going to define the players now we're going to define the local player equals players dot local player Player. Then we're gonna get the player GUI, local player dot player GUI, and now we're gonna require fusion, so local fusion, so we can do player GUI that scripts that fusion, and we want to require this. Actually, we don't have to require fusion. Now inside fusion, we're gonna require hydrate, so local hydrate local hydrate equals require fusion dot instances dot hydrate, and we're gonna require on event equals require fusion dot instances dot on event. For the first type of button we're gonna go over is just the simple button where you press it, there's a nice hover animation in between when you click. That's what we're gonna go over first. All right, so to make that, we wanna define the tweens. So we're gonna say the info for the tweens. So local info one plus tween info dot new. Put the time at a tenth of a second. And then we're gonna do the easing style as cubic. And then the easing direction, we're going to say in. And then we're gonna say info two equals tween info dot new 0 0.05. And we can move this outside the table if we want. It doesn't have to be in the table. In the table, we're gonna define a new function. We're gonna say button actions dot press button. This is a GUI button. Within the function, we're gonna define click tween, hover tween, and press tween. And then we're gonna say OG size equals button dot size. And we're gonna say local OG color position. And then to make this work with every kind of button, we'll say if button find first child color, then OG color position equals button dot color dot position. And this is for certain types of buttons we'll be making that have colors in it. Next, we're gonna hydrate the button and then we're going to say on event and that event is going to be mouse button one down equals function and then in this function we're going to define some tweens so we're going to define the click tween and we're going to say click tween equals tween service 
create button and then info two and then open bracket and we're gonna say size equals udin two dot new. We're gonna say og size dot x dot scale and then we're gonna multiply that by 0.9 comma zero and then og size dot y dot scale. And we're gonna also multiply that by 0.9 and then zero. And then we're gonna close that and then we're gonna say if og color position then press tween equals tween service create button dot color info two open table and then we say position equals udim2 dot new og color position dot x dot scale comma zero comma zero point five comma zero and then out of that we're going to say press tween play and then out of the if statement we're going to say click tween play open bracket on event open parenthesis mouse button one up and this is going to be equal to function and we're going to do the same thing we did up here but down here so we're going to do click tween equals tween service create button info to bracket size equals og size and then once again if og color position then press tween equals tween service create button dot color info to position in squiggly brackets equals og color position and we're going to come out of that and we're going to say press tween play and then outside the if statement we're going to say click tween play now we have the button press and the bus button depress animation so once again we're going to do on event open parenthesis mouse enter equals function and this will be hover tween equals tween service create button info one open bracket this will be size udim2 dot new og size dot x dot scale times 1.08 comma zero comma og size dot y dot scale and then we're going to also multiply that by 1.08 comma zero and then we want to say hover tween play we have to move this squiggly bracket down to cover all the hydrates and then we can highlight this and then format selection so now we have when the mouse enters now when the mouse leaves it has to revert back to normal so we're going to say on event mouse leave equals function hover tween equals tween service create button info one size equals og size and then once again if og color position and press tween equals tween service create button dot color info two and then position equals og color position and then we're going to say press tween play and then we want to say hover tween play and then there we go this is a uh, first tag done for a button so let's go create a button now so once again i'm in my frame this is where i'll be creating the buttons and there we go this is our my first little button if i go click in the button and i scroll down here and then tags if i add press button when i click play oh uh, i forgot a comma right here i'm going to comma right here make sure all the ends have commas make sure all of these have proper commas right here i'm forgetting a comma here as well so when we push play hover and that works that's our button and you're like well the button doesn't do anything right here we can say a print statement and say print hey button has been pressed when we push play and when we click it, it says hey the button's been pressed boom now that we have this, we have the animations done for a button. So the next one we're gonna work on is toggle. And uh, what the toggle button does is it's just on and off, off, on. All right, let's go ahead now and make the toggle button. I'm gonna make a new text button. I'm going to make the background color 876.7. I'm gonna set the anchor point to be 0.5.5, the position to be 0.5.5, the size to be one. In the explorer, we're gonna add aspect ratio to the button. We're gonna add a corner to the button and we're gonna add a bool value to the button. We're gonna keep bool value, name is value, and we're gonna set it to value true. Corner, we're gonna set the radius to 16. The Now under the text button, let's create another frame we're going to call this frame color we're going to set this position to be 0.5 on the x and 0.44 on the y and then we're going to set its size to be 0.96 comma 0 comma 0.92 comma 0 and then we're just going to set the anchor point to be 0 0.5 0.5 now in color we're going to add a ui corner we're going to put that at 12 and then we're going to put in a gradient and in the gradient we're going to click the three dots next to color and we're going to set the left one to be like a yellowish green that kind of green and then we're going to go to the right side and we're going to set it to a nice bright green so we have this very small slight gradient right there we go we have a nice gradient and then we're going to set the rotation to be 90. and now we're going to add a ui stroke and we're going to set the stroke to be the same color as the button so we can come to the button 
copy the background color and then go to color and then put it there. And then we're gonna set the stroke to be four. Now, the last thing, we're gonna add a text label to the button. And this is gonna be called state. And we're gonna add a stroke immediately. We're gonna set the stroke to miter and the stroke thickness to four. And then we're gonna come back to state. We're gonna set the anchor point to be 0.5.5. And then the position to be 0.5.5 and the size to be 0.8 and the Y size to be 0.7. Then we're going to scroll down and we're going to scale the text. We're going to set the text to Fredoka. We're going to make it white. And then we're going to go back up to the top and set the background transparency clear. And then by default, we're going to set it to on. So now we have a button on. All right, now that we have the toggle button, we have to code it. So we're going to come to button actions and we're going to make another function. Function, button actions dot toggle button. And then we're going to also pass the button and this is a GUI button. And then we're going to define the bool value. So local bool value equals button find first child of class full value. And then we're gonna define the color frame. Color frame equals button, find first child color. Then we wanna find the state label, which is local state label equals button, find first child date. I'm gonna set a helper function inside this function to update the visuals of the button. So we're gonna say local function update visuals is on. And this will be the variable we can tell if it's on or not. Say if state label, then state label dot text equals is on and on or off. So if is on is true and on, on, then it's going to say on. If it's not true, then it's going to say off. And right below that, we're going to come to button. Background color three equals is on and green color or red color. If color frame and color frame is a frame, then we're going to say local UI gradient equals color frame. My first child of class and we want UI gradient. And that if statement, and after defining that, if UI gradient, then UI gradient dot color equals is on and green gradient or red gradient. Again, we have not defined that yet. We're going to come back to that. I'm going to go outside the if statement. We're going to do the same thing for the UI stroke. So local UI stroke equals color frame. Find first child of class. And this is a UI stroke we're looking for. And then if UI stroke, then UI stroke dot color equals is on and green color or red color. Now let's go define our colors. So we're gonna come scroll up outside of the function, go to the description and you're gonna copy and paste these colors. Now we're gonna come back down here out of this update visuals function. We're gonna add some more logic. We're gonna say button.txt equals button.parent.name. If bool value, then update visuals on bool value dot value. So this will initialize the button so you can have it set on or off by default. And then we're gonna hydrate the button. Same way we hydrated the other ones. I'm gonna say on event mouse button one up equals function. If bool value, then bool value dot value equals not bool value dot value. And this will basically just flip flop the value. And then we're gonna say update visuals, bool value dot value. This should be the toggle button done. So now if we come into our toggle button we made and we scroll down, we can add the tags press button and we can add the tag toggle. So now if we push play, we can have, we have the tweens just like the other one, but if we click it, all right, so the reason it wasn't working is right here. We are looping over button action instead of button actions. Make sure there's an S here and this is button actions in the local script. Coming back into the module script, we have our code. And if we click play, our toggle button should toggle on and off. And you can read this value from anywhere if you go to the button and the value is either on or off. So you could read the value there. All right. That's the toggle button done. Wanted to reiterate the importance of why we coded the buttons this way. We can initialize as many buttons as we want as long as it's in our starter GUI. So that means we can have any kind of button. In the next video, if there's interest for it, I'll show you guys how to make a shimmer button and a spew button or a purchase button. Um, and those look like this. This is what a shimmer button looks like. It has like a nice shine, kind of like Pet Simulator. And uh, this is what the spew looks like. It's just a little animation that plays when the player purchases something. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of nice. Let me know if you guys would like a part two for those kind of buttons, or if you would like any other kinds of buttons, let me know and I'll make them. If you watch this far, I just wanna say thank you for watching. I, I really appreciate it. Let me know how I can improve and uh, what you wanna see next. If you, if you liked the video, leave it a like and subscribe if you think I've earned it. I'll, I'll see you in the next one.